Impact Lounge is the number one YouTube channel for fans of Impact Wrestling. Make, make a, make a, uh, a good, good lucha, lucha thing. That is just a fact of life. Hello, welcome back to the Impact Lounge review of this week's Impact. I'm your host, Adam, and I'm joined by Ro after a two-week absence, as we didn't review last week's show due to Slammiversary. How are you doing, Ro? I'm great, Adam. How are you doing? Yeah, really good. Quite excited to uh, to talk about this week's show because, you know, I, I've been listening to all the, the things that have been on the, the Impact Lounge channel this week, and there's been massive traffic coming through, so fantastic. Keep supporting us, listeners, and if you aren't subscribing yet, why not just hit that subscribe button, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on Podbean, SoundCloud, wherever it is you listen to us. Uh, make sure you do hit the subscribe because uh, those figures are going up. And at the moment, Impact is on a real high, you know, coming off a fantastic. It was fantastic, wasn't it? The pay-per-view. Yes. And then even the post anniversary episode of Impact, I I don't want to say I was too worried, but just I really wanted to see them capitalize on the momentum that they had gained prior from uh, Slammiversary, and they were able to do that. So, yeah, so so do make sure you hit subscribe. And while we're talking about subscribe, followers, those kind of things, also please do follow me on Twitter. I haven't posted anything since I last asked, but the reason I'm saying make sure you get in nice and early is that I'm going to be going to the UK tapings for Impact and uh, I'll be giving live updates during the show and uh, photos and those kind of things. So if you want to, to keep up to date while the UK show's going on, make sure you follow me on Twitter and that email, well, email address, my Twitter handle is uh, at V2, that's the letter V, and then the number two wrestling show. So make sure you give me a follow on there. And Ro as well, you're on Twitter. Uh, have you picked up many listeners since last time? Yes, and, you know, I really appreciate the follows and just the interactions. A lot of times people will share their opinions, whether, you know, what we go over on the Impact reviews or just some of the stuff that I might tweet as it pertains to Impact. I love the discussion. You know, we can agree to disagree respectfully. So just keep it going. And uh, for those of you who don't know, my Twitter handle is RTGreat underscore. Once again, that's RTGreat underscore. So there you go. So make sure you follow us both on Twitter. Um, yeah, so uh, as we always do with this show, the way that we break it down is we have a look at uh, this week's impact. Before we do that, though, we always get into a trivia question and your questions as well from the last review. So if you are listening to us on, you know, something like Podbean or or Apple Music or whatever it may be, we don't always get the questions coming through from there. So either hit us up on Twitter or go to the YouTube channel, Impact Lounge, and leave us the questions on the review because we do check them out every week and we always discuss about what we're going to talk about uh, the following week. So that's the best way to do it. So, yeah, so trivia question, first of all. We, we Two weeks ago, I asked what was the original main event in at the first Bound for Glory. And uh, the answer was... Uh, I'm just going to see who was actually first, actually. Uh, I think it was uh, Richard Cartledge um, who answered Jeff Jarrett versus Rhino with Tito Ortiz as ref. You <laughs> you obviously, you knew I was going to go for a Tito Ortiz question eventually. So there you go. That was it. And and I think Rhino had won a uh, kind of 20-man battle royal to get, the, to get the main event, and it wasn't very long or very good from memory. But there you go. That was this week's trivia question. So, Ro... You're going to set this week's. And, and I've got to say, this is about the first one I think I've ever got when you've asked me off the air. So let's go for it. Yeah, I I don't think anyone will have too much trouble trying to figure this one out, but we'll see. So um, my, the three clues for the trivia question this week is I'm an original, TNA original, that is. The match that I've innovated, I've lost more than I've won. And I'm one of the rare few to actually win a world title via disqualification who am i so there you go uh, answers will be on next week's show or uh, you can just obviously look at uh, the comments on the youtube section there's always one smart alec who gets in there about three minutes after we upload the video so uh, uh good luck with that one so we usually then dive into our questions that were asked from uh, the previous show and obviously that was two weeks ago now um I'm going to start off with, with my question of this week, and I did promise I was going to ask answer this one. Uh, let me just see who it was from, though. So uh, it was basically, uh, whoopsie. 
Great name, by the way. Whoopsie, I don't know where you come from. Let us know. But uh, he asked, why don't I have a Scottish accent like Grado and Joe Hendry? Uh, it's a very good question. Uh, I think if, the, if any of you are British listeners listening to this, you'll most probably realise that it's very hard to pinpoint where I come from. But I'm actually not Scottish. I just live in Scotland and I've been up here 20 years. But I'm originally from Wales, uh, the land of uh, dragons and Tom Jones. So uh, I don't even have a Welsh accent, though. So so that's the reason why I don't have one. But uh, I do know Grado. I've met him uh, quite a few times on a social basis. He's a top guy. And uh, I, I'll be honest with you, most Glaswegians do talk just like Grado. So uh, there there you go. There's the answer to that question. Uh, Ro, why don't you have a, uh, an accent like Grado? No, I'm just uh, kidding. <laughs> I, I know one is some people wonder, you know, pe people know me on a personal level. You know, why don't I talk as loud? I say, I don't know. Um, <laughs> a lot of times when I order food, I probably have to repeat myself four and five times. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, so that was that was a bit of a fun one to start off with. But uh, you did have a, a question for us, didn't you, from this week's uh, listeners? Yes, um, I believe it's from Richard Cartledge. And he was asking, do we do we think that Sammy Callahan is capable of or let's say, do we ever see them putting the Impact World Championship on Sammy Callahan? You know, I think with Sammy Callahan's character, it seems like just for the time being, you know, and it, he, he's not too much on the winning side of some of these feuds and it's okay it doesn't damage him and that's a unique trait to have because for some res wrestlers when they lose two matches in a row it sometimes that's the end of them and it doesn't affect him much uh, it remains to be seen really um i really think with the company they really got to kind of position some of uh, these uh main event baby faces and put the title on them and then i think it could be more of a realistic option I think if he were to win any gold, I could see the X Division Championship, as strange as it sounds. I've kind of uh, changed my opinion on it, and it looks like they're going to expand it, seeing that Brian Cage is champion now. So I'm not going to rule it out, but if I had to say what championship I could see him winning, because I do think he'll win some gold, I could see the X Division being a viable option. First of all, just on that, you can see him winning some gold. I think he deserves to win some gold uh, as well because, you know, he is doing the job and, and he's drawing heat from everywhere and, and he's, he is fantastic. Um, the one thing I would say is that I can see him winning a world title. Will he win the impact one? I don't know. But he's on three shows a week on TV, which I don't think many people are, you know, on as many shows. I can't think of anyone else who appears on as many shows, um, unless you count Total Divas and the, and the two WWE ones. But, um, yeah, so I can see him winning a world title somewhere, and deservedly so. Even something like, I would imagine maybe even like the NWA title. Because I, I think someone like him would, would be amazing with the NWA title, you know, just defending it in different territories all around the world. Uh, I could really see that happening with someone like Sammy. Will he win the Impact one? I think he deserves it, but I just don't think so yet. And you brought up an interesting point about eating losses as well. I was going to cover that in the, in the main part of the show tonight. But it, it is amazing how it's not damaging him at all. And there's been other people in, and we, I always refer to WWE, but I mean, you look at Bray Wyatt and Dean Ambrose, you know, they have been eating pins and it's picked up now, you know, that they're habitual losers. And, uh, at the moment, it doesn't feel like that with Sammy Callahan. I mean, you look at this week's show, the promo was fantastic, and he doesn't feel like a loser. He still feels like someone who's an absolute maniac who, who could kill anyone at any point. And, and that is something that Impact is doing better than, than any other company out there for, has done for years, and that's making wrestlers look dangerous in defeat. And it, you can't really say that about any other company at the moment, you know, that their, their creative is absolutely spot on. So fantastic question. Um, and listeners, please, yeah, do you carry on? Drop us some comments. Let us know what you think on that. Do you see Sammy Callahan uh, as a title holder in Impact or certainly a world title holder? Um, drop your comments below. Um, any other questions or is that it for this week, do you think? Yeah, that was the one that really just stuck out to me. Great. Right. Well, we're going to dive into the show in a second. But as we said, if you have got a question for us, you'd like us to answer. It could be 
something from the past. It could be, um, you know, something from this week's show. Just uh, drop us a message and we'll be delighted to answer it next week. So before we dive into this week's show, what did you think of it overall? Do you think it was a, a worthy follow up or was it subpar compared to what we've seen leading up to Slammiversary and Slammiversary itself? Yeah, I believe it was a worthy follow up. You know, the one thing and I kind of I hope and it looks like they're doing this while they got the buzz that that they've been getting, you know, stemming from Slammiversary, just stay the course. You know, you don't want to um, find yourself trying to pander to what others might want. I mean, it's cool to take, obviously, some opinions, but stay the course because obviously what they got going on is working for them. And yeah, I think this was a viable post slam anniversary. I mean, they're capitalizing on the momentum that they've gained. So kudos to Impact. Yeah, absolutely. And I think they also played on it, didn't they? They were talking about how social media were, you know, waxing lyrical about it. And and fair play, you know, they hit out the park. Why not revel in it for a little bit? But you're quite right. I think they just need to carry on with the simple storytelling that they've been doing, and don't try and change it because of. Now suddenly they're the cool kids in, in town, you know. Stick to what you're doing, and because they've been doing, it, they, they've been slamming it every week. So fantastic stuff. So uh, anyway, kicking off, we started off with Austin Aries' his championship announcement. Now, before I go into what was actually said, there is one thing that I wanted to comment on here. The sound in the opening segment was terrible, and. It started off, I mean, I was listening to it on headphones, so I don't know if it, it came over better on telly, but certainly on the headphones, when Austin started to talk, it was very echoey, and there was fans in the front row who were shouting something, I can't remember what, but they were actually louder than Austin Aries was on, on, on the mic pickup. I don't know if you noticed that as well. I didn't catch that. I think the only thing I heard them chanting was Austin Aries, and, you know, I like his comeback. Like, he's, you know, playing up to his heel. He's like, I know my name. Thank you. I, I, I thought he was he was great, you know, and I really liked the promo. But I, I said I was worried at the beginning of the show. By the end of the show, it, it completely gone, and I really enjoyed it. But uh, that opening promo, I was I was really worried that oh dear, we're going to have uh, some issues with the, uh, the you know the sound quality. It was the same when Madison Rain cut a promo a few weeks ago from Windsor. Uh, you know, the, the the sound quality there was terrible as well, and it's something that you know impact have had problems with i think you know miking the the audience and and just getting those sound levels right so hopefully it was a i was going to say a one-off the last time that we have this issue anyway so what do you think of this with eddie edwards coming in uh, are you quite pleased that he seems to be the, the next guy yeah it's just from two fronts because on one end i was looking at it, i'm like well because you know i'm still trying to well, well, I don't want to say trying to, but, you know, I accept the fact that Moose didn't win the Impact World Championship because I really thought he was going to win it because I find myself saying, well, who's going to challenge Austin Aries next? You know, they need he needs some uh, people to face until they have somebody ready, you know, for him to really a viable challenger. And I was worried about with Eddie Edwards just because how the match ended between him and Tommy Dreamer. I didn't know what direction they're going to go with him because you know, it didn't seem like he was turning full hill. He kind of, you know, came back down to earth. But I like this. This gives Austin Aries another challenger, and it gives Eddie Edwards something to do as well. So I'm fine with this, and I'm interested to see if this is something that, I, don't, I mean, I don't expect to be no long, drawn-out feud, but if this is something that, you know, they take their time, invest in a couple weeks, or if this, you know, where are we going to get this match next week, and then that's the end of it. So, yeah, no problem at all. So so what do you think Eddie Edwards is at this point? Because obviously Austin Aries is playing a heel champion. So do you think they're going to go with heel versus heel? Or do you think there's going to be a slight either softening of Austin Aries or, or softening of, of Eddie Edwards in this one? I think with Eddie Edwards, the kind of vibe that I got, and I, I hate to just compare with people, I want to say in a sense, okay, they might give him... And I don't, you know, I can't even compare that because I want to say, I don't know if they're going to give him kind of like a Tommy, Dream, Tommy Dreamer like where he's kind of, uh, you know, he's cool, but, you know, he can be hardcore. So I think he's just in between. I think he's going to get cheered. I don't think he's going to do anything hillish outside of attacking people with the kendo stick. And I mean, to a lot of people that may be perceived as being badass. So, yeah, I, I don't I don't think we're going to see him turn full heel. I mean, he attacked a heel. So, I mean... 
think that makes him face by default. But it, you know, it's really hard to really uh, put point out or figure out, I should say, uh, which direction that they're going. But it's interesting to say the least. Yeah, I mean, it's great. And, you know, and once again, some of the things that Aries was saying before Eddie came out, you know, once again, throwing a bit of shade on uh, WWE, you know, having scripted promos and those kind of things. You know, Don Callis in the week said about this as well. It's funny how Impact really has gone back to basic territorial booking, you know, even with the, the pay-per-view, it was clean finishes. You know, they didn't want people going away saying, well, that was a screw finish. And I know we talked about this offline earlier on, you know, say, saying I was slightly disappointed that there wasn't any Russo-esque stuff in there, you know, a run-in or, or a, a dusty finish of some sort. But, you know, when I think back to it now, where I see that the company's going, I actually don't mind that. I think it, it does act as a, as a reset, doesn't it? That, you know, we're not the impact of old. You know, we're not going to have screwy finishes every week we are a proper wrestling company booked properly and, and so I'm, I'm i'm really pleased you know that that although they're throwing some shade on WWE about promos and those kind of things they're, they're running it as a proper you know something different to wwe something that's that that's booked well and just a solid solid show albeit a very entertaining solid show so um yeah so so then we went into pt williams versus uh ishimori and Ishimori's new look, first of all. What, do you like this? Not really. I enjoyed, you know, when he was previously, because I guess now he's part of the Bullet Club. I, I I was a fan of his previous look. I mean, the work, the ring work is still there, but I don't know. It's something that I like. The, the, like, for example, I liked when, uh, you know, in his old attire where he would have that sequence where he'd do the uh, senton off the rope and then uh, he would uh, rip his shirt off. I mean, <laughs> not for no creepy reasons, but I don't know it was just something about that, <laughs> something about his character. Then I uh, enjoyed more than this. Yeah, it's it's funny the Bullet Club stuff because obviously you know they they refer to it on the show, you know, and there's a lot more interaction between all the promotions and out there now. Uh, I kind of hope they don't go down and bring the Bullet Club into Impact because to me it feels like it's a bit done, you know, and it's a bit spent. You know, uh, it, it's been in other promotions and there's a lot of talk about it. But at this point, bringing it in, it, it seems a bit too late to do it. You know, and the Bullet Club's so big now. Uh, I actually think I might be a member. I don't know. I, I got something through the post. Uh, I think I'm a member somewhere. You know, uh, and it's a bit getting in NO, NWO territory, isn't it? Where everyone is part of, of it at some point. So, um, but yeah, I, I don't mind him representing them, but I hope they don't bring in the Bullet Club as a faction of some sort. With regards to his look, I actually prefer the, you know, the the trousers kind of kind of thing, because I always thought that uh, he wore, you know, pole dancing stripper shorts, uh, which which always put me off, uh, you know, with a bit on the side. So uh, you know, I, I kind of like uh, you know the the dark dark look, but um, yeah, he looks like a completely different wrestler, doesn't he, with his cut hair and 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 his change in appearance. It, it doesn't seem like the same Ishimori, but but once again fantastic match this was you know you never really see him do any botches or any, we talked about it before he's just so good in the ring yeah very crisp in this match i mean in uh, you know credit to pd too i think a lot of pd's work is uh, underrated a lot of times when i see him you know for me he just comes across as so small but you know he's so capable and uh these were you know th this was a good uh, um you know, good match just because they got they. It seemed like they had good chemistry, and obviously Ishimori gets the win uh, with that a new finisher. I mean, I don't know if that's something that he's been doing since uh, joining the Bullet Club, but normally we see him using the 450. But that was a sick finisher. I liked that. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. I think it was like a modified DDT of some sort, wasn't it? Um, I'm not quite sure what they call it, but uh, yeah, it was it was good. And what I really liked about this, there was quite a lot of near finishes, and you know, at times they looked like they were, you know, he, he pulled out the Canadian destroyer, although he didn't hit it. You know, you kept on thinking, oh, this is going to be it, this is going to be it, and and the match continued. So, PT's in the right place on the roster now for where he is in his career you know he is a gateway star who can put on a great match can make other talent look really really talented so um i wonder what's going to happen to ishimori do, do you think he's going to stay around do you think he he'll get back into x division or do you think it's just you know they've had a, a you know a, a thing with new japan and and that's it you know they're going to just do these tapings and then he'll go back or, or do you think that he's going to be more long term 
I think they'll use him when needed. Like anytime uh, they want to bring him in, they will because he has a credibility. Obviously, former X Division champion. I mean, he's been quite successful in Impact, and then especially now since he's a part of the Bullet Club, you know, you can always get that and play off of that. So. I don't think it's something long term with him, but they'll be they'll bring him in now and then. It seems like there's a good relationship between the company and him, so that's always good. Cause you think about it, wasn't his original departure because he was trying to head to the other company? Um, well, there was talk about that. He said, well, he said that he wanted to to go on to you know bigger companies, and I suppose you could argue that going to uh, it's new, it is New Japan, isn't it? He's gone to yeah, it is New Japan. That you know he could perceive that as being what he was referring to. I don't know, but I mean this guy, he's just so t- super talented in the ring. What I didn't understand is that his new ring attire and and his gimmick seems to be heelish, but at the end he did a, you know a proper babyface move, didn't he, of holding up Petey's hand, which kind of didn't really understand that. But I'm guessing it you know it was obviously just to, to to introduce the Desi Hit Squad in, as you know, my favourite topic, the Desi Hit Squad, who I think are amazing. Um, so yeah, they hit the ring afterwards and and destroyed them. This is the first time I've actually, to be genuine, I, I did actually enjoy this segment with, with uh, the Desi Hit Squad because, you know, I've always been a, a fan of um, uh, Rajit. Uh, so, yeah. Um, what, what did you make of the post-attack? Although, being random, what did you make of it? I liked it. I just thought it went on a little bit too long. I mean, not that it's a big deal, but I thought, you know, it looked like they were finished and they go back in and then they hit their finishers. Uh, and then they, b- before that, they hit a double team move. I kind of thought they should have done it just all in one se- sequence, but... I like this. I think, you know, they've been doing some rehabilitation of the group as a whole just because you think about we kept hearing about it and hearing about it. Now we see it finally come into fruition. So I think this is good for them. And, you know, it's only a matter of time where we'll start seeing them move up the tag ranks. And that might, they, soon enough, they might be the next uh, challengers for LAX's tag team cha- championship. See, see, the thing that I don't get about this, and, and I'm looking more at, PT and Ishimori at this point is that you got Ishimori coming in from New Japan and New Japan are not going to want him to look like a jobber, are they? Or chump. They, they want him to look good. Otherwise, all that's going to happen, if, you, if you're making him job out each week, it's going to be a situation where they're not going to give you any talent in the future because they think you'll do it again and again. So I understand why Ishimori won this match and rightly so. You know, PT's at the tail end of his career. But unless they are looking to have a program with these two against the Desi Hit Squad, it seems a bit bizarre, the booking. Do you think we're going to see these two tag for a little while and go into a little mini feud with them? No, I think this was used as a way, like, first, on your first comment, I think a lot of times when you're talking about these partnerships, like, obviously, they understand, the, the, the companies that are working together understand that, you know, whatever wrestlers are sending over aren't going to win every single match. But I think it's how you lose. And I, even when you think about this match between PD and Ishimori, there's times in this match where, like, oh, dang, uh, PD wins might pull this off. And I think when you have that where there's a there's really that 50-50, it can go either way, then it's fine versus you just have somebody run, running right through them. As far as a post-match attack, I think it was designed more to kind of let – you know, impact the Impact Wrestling Fan Nation know that hey, the Dizzy Hit Squad is on the scene, and you know they're looking for gold. They have gold in their sights. So I don't, I'd be, I'd be surprised if we see them, see them uh, uh, facing Ishimori and Peter Williams. If anything, I could see them facing Cam and Falaba, given the interaction they had. I want to say a couple weeks ago. So, uh, yeah, I, I just felt like this was more just designed to show, you know, show everyone, hey, the Desi Hit Squad is here and, uh, you know, we mean business, so to speak. Fair enough. Um, OK, so so let's move on. We went to uh, Anthony Corelli, uh, basically Santino backstage. Uh, I think it was with Alicia, wasn't it? I think he was talking to her from memory. Um, anyway, so he was being interviewed backstage and it was weird not seeing him with a fake Italian accent. Uh, talking. It, man. <laughs> yeah, you wanted him to break out Super Marioisms, didn't you? You know, saying like, "Hey, here she is, Alicia." Uh, but yeah, so it was just weird seeing him with a normal accent. But th- there's something really likable about him. Although I thought he stumbled a few words. What I really liked about this, before we get up to the Austin Aries bit, was that they promoted their Twitch show, which is great. Because I, I listened to what you and BQ recorded, and you know, BQ did a few things, and he was saying about the Twitch show, saying that it gets 
barely any watchers the, the thing that he does which is a shame because he's a really likable guy so it's great that they're now advertising other things on you know the the network and the twitch channel so that was good but overall austin aries was was great you know i, I love the comment he made i can't exactly remember what it was but it was something like oh it must be great to meet me or something like that you know uh it must be a pleasure for you but austin aries is is is, is once again smashing out the part and i really like how they set this up yeah, you know, and that was the, the one thing, and it just kind of just brought me back a little bit before I get into that, was I had to kind of, you know, realize that that accent that he, that uh, Anthony Corelli used to portray his former character, obviously, you know, that was for his character, so it took me quite a bit, and, you know, it had me wondering, you know, it's a shame that never really got the opportunity, or at least I never really got the opportunity to see him really wrestle, because I had read some of his background. He seemed like he was capable, but then obviously with that character that he was portraying at the time, it didn't fit what they were, the direction they were going. And I obviously the interaction with Austin Aries is cool. You know, he, when he's like, nice to meet you, he's like, yeah, I know it is a pleasure to meet me. You know, the thing where it had me confused was the match between Austin Aries and the student of Anthony Corelli's, I had thought it was going to take place on this show. But is this something for that they're scheduling for a future show, or is it going to be a, one of the Twitch specials? Did you did you get any uh, uh, inf information on that just based off of this? Yeah, I think I think it's probably happening next week. But you're quite right. The way that they built it up was like it was just going to happen later on tonight. You know, he's, he's pissed off at being attacked by Eddie Woods. You know, I want to beat someone up in the ring. So it did seem that way. It was going to be on this show. And and, and to be honest with you, before, as we started to talk about this segment, I was like thinking. Did I miss the match? <laughs> I had to think. So I'm glad that you actually said you were surprised it wasn't on the show. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so I'm guessing it's going to be over the next couple of weeks that we'll see it. And you know, let's face it, I don't think they're going to be putting it on uh, his student, although that would be awesome. Um, I think so. That is not how I, mean, I don't know if you watch WWE, but I'm sure that's how uh, Santino won the belt. Uh, in WWE, it was shown an Italian house show that they made an open challenge, and he came out and he won it. it I think it was Intercontinental or something like that. Yeah, it was so, on. Uh, it was on Raw. Yeah, during that time, I I want to say that was back in '08 or so, because I, I was watching. Uh, I used to watch it then, and uh, Lashley actually helped him out. It might have been '07. I take that back, but Lashley actually aided him in uh, beating. I think he beat the late Umaga for it. So. Yeah, um, and you know, the one thing I didn't even know, too, and I guess that's what made him retire, he had, to, and uh, Austin Aries took some jabs at him, and that's what ended up uh, setting up the match between him and the student, but I guess he had some neck problems that forced him to retire, which is unfortunate, I, I didn't, but I didn't know that. Yeah, that's right, I, he did have a bit of an announcement on Raw uh, a couple of years back saying it, and, and there was talk that maybe it wasn't as bad as, it, as they thought he was going to come back, but obviously not, but the thing is, He's, you know, he seems like a decent guy, so I don't think he's a bad guy to have around, especially if he's doing impact stuff, you know, on, on, on the Twitch channels, etc. you know, weekly, you know, podcasts, those kind of things. So, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed this section. And, uh, yeah, Austin Aries continues to be great, you know, being Austin Aries. It's really good. So up next, we had Rebel versus Tessa uh, Blanchard. And, well, yeah. Um, I, I'm sorry, I've, I've just been distracted because when I'm reading the spoilers, they show pictures of uh, of the wrestlers and they're showing one of Rebel from behind. And oh, I just, oh, as, as, as I said, I, as I said, I just got distracted again. The one thing that surprised me was Tessa always seems bigger than the wrestlers that she's faced, but Rebel was actually bigger than her. I don't know if you noticed that during the match. I think more so in height, and then too, uh, Rebel her leg got long legs too. So, oh, I didn't notice. I've never noticed that. Never noticed that. That she's got long legs. <laughs> Jeez, can't take my eyes off them. Um, anyway, this was uh, Rebel's best match by a country mile, but it still wasn't great. Um, but she did actually look like a wrestler in this one for a change. You know, it was designed, obviously, you know, carrying off of uh, Tessa's big win over Ali at Slammiversary. They wanted to give her a dominant win. BQ and I were talking about this, and I know sometimes when we're doing these reviews, you know, we can get sour real quick when cer certain wrestlers lose consecutively. And, you know, let's face it, the way that they use Rebel, she's kind of like an enhancement to Ali. And it's unfortunate, you know, because she's made, made strides, and you like to see that with someone who comes in, isn't good, and then, you know, through years staying with the company, they get better. The one thing I will say, what they have to do, and even in Rebel's case, you got to give her some type of win, so then that way, when someone beats, beats, uh, beats her, 
there's some credibility to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, obviously, you know, you walk into this, you fully expect Tessa to win. But, I mean, if, you know, if Rebel, well, you know, watch out. You know, she's, you know, got this many wins on her belt or some, some type of backstory. It makes it seem like she's just not no uh, pushover. You know, you buy more into it. So, you know, it, it kind of stinks because I don't think she's ever won a match in Impact. So it, that that's just something, even if you put her on Explosion and have her beat an enhancement talent, I think it can go a long way. So I think that's just something with some of these lower level talents that Impact has. The one thing they have to do, no one's saying they got to go on some five match winning streak, but you, know, you give them a win every now and then and stuff. So then when they face the bigger names, you know, us as fans, we can buy into it a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with you on that one. And, uh, uh, yeah, I, I I was thinking when you started off saying that, you know, she's got to get some wins. Uh, I was thinking uh, Explosion is, is the absolutely the perfect place for her to pick up one or two, you know. And you look at you know, some of the guys they've let through, you know, you don't really see Casey Spinelli anymore. I know she's one of the undead bridesmaids, but, you know, even a match at Rebel could pick a, a win against someone like that or Ava Story when she was around. You know, I, I just think that, as you say, it would add so much to her credibility in the ring. But every time you see Rebel now, you think, oh, well, uh, I wonder who's winning this match. You know, who's coming out next? But anyway, um, Tessa was good in it, and Rebel got some offense in, which was which was good to see. It wasn't just a squash match, but uh, let's face it, it was a pretty, it was a nothing match, really, wasn't it? I mean, if this wasn't on the card, no one would have noticed. Yeah, I mean, like I said, and, you know, you kind of, you just look at the landscape of the knockouts. I mean, you know, you got a good crop of knockouts, but... Obviously, some of them, when you're trying to push one, you know, someone's got to eat a pin. So I just think that's just something they can do. And, I, I, you know, the one art and they, they do it every now and then, you know, finding local talent, you know, when you're trying to put over certain people. I think if you were to replace Rebel and just had some enhancement talent and have Tessa run through them in like 60 seconds, I think it would have served the same purpose. So I just think that's just something that they can tweak, you know, down the road. So but yeah, good win for Tessa. Um and nice to see Rebel. <laughs> <laughs> Always nice to see Rebel. So anyway, I, I was going to go on to the Scarlet Bordeaux debut next. Um, but before I do, so, uh, because, you know, part of this segment I want to talk about is, is Don Callis' commentary, which once again was great all night. But what do you think of Don Callis' new look uh, as as a, an 80s pimp? D did you quite like it? Man, I meant to mention this <laughs> on the Slammiversary uh, review, like... He was looking dap, dapper, man. I was like, look at Don, man. <laughs> he's really, it, it, do you know what it seems to me is that he's really enjoying himself. And, you know, that whenever I've, I've been in a job, you know, you always work better when you enjoy yourself in the job. If you just go in and you hate going into work, it's, it's soul destroying. But Don Callis actually looks like he's having the time of his life. And for him, he must be, you know, he'll read the dirt sheets, he'll read the online comments all over the place and these guys he's most probably listening to this show now hi don um but yeah he must love seeing the positivity that's around impact at the moment because it is it's huge positivity it's you know there's absolutely a groundswell towards pro impact as opposed to lol tna anymore so uh it, and he's living the dream dressing as a pimp as i said there you go uh so anyway so scarlet bordeaux comes out next and uh yeah she looked pretty good didn't she let's face it Hey, when I seen her come out, went on Twitter, search, follow. All <laughs> <laughs> so I, I really liked the promo as well. And I thought Alicia uh, did a good, um, you know, sec interview at this part as well. You know, she played her part in it as well. I thought it was really, really good. Uh, the one thing, although she looks absolutely stunning, the one thing that I thought about it was that she was incredibly unsexy in the way that she moved. She was she was like someone who, who doesn't have sex appeal trying to act like someone who does. Although she is, you know, very good looking. I, 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 maybe I'm not explaining myself, but just the way she moved, I wasn't buying it totally. No, I didn't see that. I mean, I think the one thing I took away what had me laughing was, you know, she's like, I'm a 10, and Alicia tried to get in something. She said, shut up, you five. And <laughs> I, I found that to be hilarious. You know, I, I had said, you know, prior to her debut and i mean obviously i'm i'm guessing the direction they're gonna go is she's gonna be a part of the knock knockouts roster which is lovely and i um I'm, one, I'm a believer and you know not that i have any type of sources but 
I believe every time we get an addition, we're going to get a subtraction. So maybe someone we haven't seen in some time, maybe they're no longer with the company. I don't know. But obviously, you know, when one comes in, someone has to go out. But back to Scarlett Bordeaux, I kind of thought, you know, it would have been nice to see her as a valet. I don't know, to somebody debuting or somebody already on the roster. But obviously, I, like I said, I think we're getting her in the knockouts division. And yeah, I it, as stunning as she looked, I thought that promo, that was a re- thing that really stuck out to me. And uh, her voice, too. I didn't expect her to have th- the voice that she she did. It was like a strong, she, you know, uh, I don't want uh, the word I kind of looking for, I guess. And not that I'm trying to judge, but I it wouldn't have surprised me if she kind of had like kind of the ditzy Valley Girl like type type of uh, voice but she had this strong you know confident woman type voice and I thought it it, it fit for her well obviously we, we've talked about how impact is going back to basics not back to basics but using old school booking and to some extent it, it sometimes feels a bit attitude era-esque what's going on in impact at the moment you know with Sammy Callahan those kind of things even Eddie Edwards um this once again smacks attitude era you know bringing the sexy back or whatever it's called uh, she wants to say bringing sexiness back to to wrestling so how far do you think they're going to go with this and do you think that we're going to get a uh, a miss kitty <laughs> exposure on a pay-per-view at some point or do you think it's just uh something that they're going to tease us with for some time no, nah, I think it's just a tease just because the climate that we live in, not in just wrestling, just in our society as a whole, a lot of that stuff. Because, you know, the one thing I'm finding myself in what makes me really enjoy Impact, and it's kind of a tell of, uh, so, you know, my wrestling fandom stemming back from when I was a little kid. The TNA days reminded me of WCW, whereas the Impact is kind of, I'm seeing more of an ECW feel a little bit. But I don't think we'll ever see anything like that just because... You know, you and even even one could say, and I'm surprised and knock on wood and anybody, I'm surprised there ain't no outrage like, oh, you know, she's shaming her by her looks by calling her a five and da 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 da. So, you know, I could only imagine if they did just say, dare I say, some type of Miss Kitty like thing, even if they toned it down. I don't think it would resonate well because it'll be perceived as, you know, you're objectifying women. And the one thing that impact doesn't get credit enough for it is you know they hire attractive women but guess what the women are talented they can work and even the ones that might not be the best in ring technicians they work on their craft and there's other things that they're able to bring they're not hiring just pretty faces off the street putting them out there then that's that like these women are are capable you know of you know working in uh, uh honing their craft so that's one thing that that really goes overlooked so you know while you know a lot of us can look at some of these women and think you know how beautiful they are they're talented as well and that's the best combination you could have on a roster yeah i I get all that and and you're right absolutely right you know impact as as an absolute brilliant track record of of uh, you know having female athletes who are very very good at wrestling and i don't know about scarlet you know what she like in the ring you know from what i've read you know she she, she's competent but this whole storyline is going down the objectifying women angle. And I, I have no problem with that. We've just talked about Rebel for the last five minutes. Um, but I, I just do wonder that if they're going down this storyline, then, you know, I, I just wonder where they're going to go with it. And, and just with the overall feel of impact being old, I keep saying old school, but that kind of late 80s, early 90s feel to it. I, I just wonder if they are going to go down that route, you know, and some of the things that they have done have been to get internet buzz you know like the i'm just trying to think you know the barbed wire massacre match you know the 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 taking pentagon's mask off putting the belt on pentagon you know a lot of these things you know they're not just done on the fly they're calculated to get people talking and i i do wonder if if they're going to go down this this route of doing things that you haven't seen in 20 years in, in wrestling with regards to the female roster, you know, the, the Playboy editions, those kind of things. And I know the world's a completely different place now, but let's face it. If you get easily offended, you shouldn't be watching wrestling anyway. And <laughs> oh, you tell, shouldn't tell wrestling Twitter that, I mean, pfft, my, you know, every now and then it's some, some type of outrage. I mean, we, we live in an outrage culture. I, I, I just kind of think, I mean, in, it's cool. I look at it like this. It would be a problem more if the women had a problem doing it and, you know, management was forcing them. I don't think I think anything these these women are doing 
they've it's stuff that they're okay with. I don't think managing would put them in a position where they're uncomfortable. I like to believe like they have a good relationship. Not just women, we're just the wrestlers in general. So and so I don't know. I, I just can't see it going that route. Um I think if anything I, I wanna lean towards maybe you know, she's going to manage someone or hell just compete in the knockouts division. Cause as much as we kind of sit back and think like, Hey, they got some solid additions. You know, we've really only see four or five of the same knockouts, you know, on the span of uh, episodes of impact. So I guess the more the merrier. Just to pick up on a couple of things, uh, just reminded me, uh, Sienna is wrestling again now. And she said that she's freed up some time and uh, she's got open dates. So I just wonder if Sienna has been let go. And maybe that's the one that they freed up to bring her in. Uh, so that kind of uh, jumped into my mind there. But what I would really like is our listeners, you know, we get comments each week. And, you know, most of the time you can't tell if you're a female or a male listener, those kind of things. But I'd be particularly interested this week to hear from any female listeners of our show what you think about this whole Scarlet Bordeaux thing. And do, would you feel uncomfortable if it does go down the route of, you know, uh, as, as Rose said, objectifying women? Just let us know. And all comments welcome, but this week I'd particularly like to hear from our female listeners on this one. If we have any, who knows? I'd like to think I'd like to think we have. Um, especially as one of our listeners once said they, they think my my British voice is sexy. So I'd like to think that was a female listener. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you never know though. Uh, I don't mind. I, actually, I, I'll take anything these days. So uh, I'll take a, a win wherever I get it. Right. Uh, okay. Let's move on. <laughs> we had a promo for Pentagon Junior uh, against his match with Sammy Callahan. Why didn't they do this when he was champion? My God. Why did they wait until he had an absolute dud of a championship run? Give him no personality, and suddenly he's no longer a title holder, and they give him a, a, a brilliant promo like this crazy yeah you know it, it's it's like they did it backwards you know they've made him more of an important character post world title reign than they did originally and that just comes to show you i think at redemption you know they were just trying to generate the buzz and you know you putting the world title on a uh, lucha underground guy obviously didn't generate the buzz that they were seeking that's why you see now you know they're just sticking to the basics and it's, it's working for them and uh you know, I've become a fan of Pentagon Jr. I mean, I like how they've presented him. He's he's great in the ring, you know. So, and I like these these uh, backstage vignettes. And he gave he gave uh, uh, Callan his credit, you know, talking about you know he pushed me to my limits, and whatnot. And uh, I never in my wildest dreams I would think that a wrestler would be able to get over speaking another language and them using subtitles because normally when you have somebody when there's a language barrier they have some sort of a manager or someone that's interpreting whatever they're saying so i, I like that he's been a they've been able to do that with him and it's gone over well yeah absolutely so it, it's good to see that it looks like he's sticking around and and they know what to do with him now uh, and they need to do more of this stuff but anyway uh let's move on um my biggest gripe with the night next trevor lee versus johnny impact and nothing wrong with this match at all. You know, it was actually quite a decent match. But I just don't like the way they're booking Trevor Lee. They, they've turned him into a jobber. From someone a month ago who cultivately were challenging for the tag titles, suddenly these two are just eating pins all over the place. And it's it's frustrating because, you know, you know I'm a huge fan of Trevor Lee and Caleb. Uh, and I just don't like the where they are at the moment. And I, I can't... I can't see these guys being around much longer if this is the way they're going to keep on being booked. You know, suddenly the tag team is not important. I can't remember the last tag team match they were in. So, uh, yeah, I, I was disappointed with this. Disappointed. Yeah, I think before we got this, if you wanted to talk about it, uh, we got the backstage promo about Seidel. Looking forward to his rematch for for tonight. Um, uh, Apologize. Uh, that's not on my, uh, my spoilers here, but I did see that. But anyway, carry on. Yeah, but as far as the Johnny Impact versus Trevor Lee, I think the only thing, I don't think the loss hurt him because this was a competitive match. I mean, he didn't run through Trevor by any stretch. Uh, Trevor got a lot in. And, you know, Trevor's accomplished, three-time uh, three X Division champion, former uh, under the TNA moniker, TNA uh, tag team champion. So, you know, he has some credentials underneath his belt. And I, I guess where I just get confused with the booking of him is, and on one end, we see then, you know, the cult of Lee. I thought that was the route that they were going for the time being. Then when they split him apart, you know, he's on the losing end of things. You know, I'm starting to believe in, and 
I don't want, like I said, I don't want to overact so much on losses, but it's just we kind of see this happen more often than not in Impact where, you know, somebody who's been with the company and maybe from, you know, that's carried carried over from the old regime, you know, been with the company for three or more so years and, you know, they start losing and the next thing you know, you know, they the, the contract expires, they don't resign. You know, you hate to see that happen with certain talents. And I think Trevor Lee is one of these talents that, you know, they could move him up the card. You know, we're always talking about, OK, there, we need to you know freshen things up in, in any of these uh, uh, divisions. Obviously, he's dominated the X division. So, you know, thrust him in the main event a little bit. No one's saying he has to necessarily win, but, you know, put him up there, see what he can do. I'd love to see him face Brian Cage. You know, he I think he has a strength to hit him for, with that deadlift German suplex or anything. So, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see. And sometimes when I'm seeing some of these people go on these losing streaks, you know, I wonder, you know, when the contract expires, you know, are they going to resign? And, and, and I thought them resigning Eli was a big deal because he could have easily walked. So him resigning speaks volumes like, you know, he believes in management that they're going to book him the right way. So I think when Trevor Lee's time comes up, you know, it'll be interesting to see what he does. But back to the match. Um, nice competitive match, obviously, giving Johnny Impact a win um, as he sets his eye, his sights on challenging for the Impact World title. Um, the one thing, and before I get into it with you, uh, get your take, obviously. I found it interesting that they're continuing his uh, angle with Congo Kong. Normally, you don't see things, you know, pass this much long in time. And, you know, somebody go and revisit it. And I thought that was interesting. So I wonder what they have in store. Yeah, I'm glad that they they, they haven't just forgotten about it. Because it does annoy me when, when people just forget about storylines. So it's great. You know, he's got unresolved business there. And it keeps him out of the world title picture for a little bit longer. You know, he says he wants to go back to the world title picture. But at least it keeps him away for another couple of months while he finishes off his Kong program. So I, I'm comfortable with that. And, and let's face it, Kong has nothing to do at the moment. Um, so, yeah, that's good. Um Kong is interesting, actually, and Jimmy Jacobs, because there's so many places you could go with this guy. You could either put him in the main event scene. You could carry on his his uh, program with um, Brian Cage. You could do it with Johnny Impact. There's so many places. You know, the the way that they've they've placed him on the roster, he, he can inject himself into any program that he likes because there's always going to be a reason why Jimmy Jacobs can think, oh, I want to interfere with this. Um I've just noticed you said about me missing the Matt Seidel promo. It was very good, by the way. I like Seidel. He's been fantastic. Um, uh, but I've just noticed on my notes that there, there's a couple of segments here that don't seem to be on here, which uh, I remember seeing, such as the Grado Eli Drake segment. I don't know where it fit in. I can't remember having watched the show. But uh, uh, should we just deal with that one now? What, what did you think of this part of it? I'm oh, sorry. Can you, can you repeat that? I, I didn't catch Yeah, the, the Grado uh, Joe Henry Eli Drake segment. Uh, I, I can't remember where it fits in on the on the program because it's not in the spoilers that I'm reading, you know, not spoilers, the, uh, the 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 review that I'm reading from my notes. So I can't remember where it fitted on the show. So I was just I thought we'd throw it in at this point in case it was here anyway. But what did you think of the segment with Grado, Henry and um, Katerina and Eli? Uh, I thought this could have been done without Eli. I want to see Eli move on to other things. It looks like maybe they're going to try to rebuild Eli. So when they thrust him back in the main event and he eventually wins the impact world title for a second time, it'll mean more and he'll have a better reign. So I really didn't want to see him involved in this. And obviously we know the end game between the Joe Hendry and uh Grado uh, storyline is Joe Hendry is going to take his girl. <laughs> I, I don't believe it. Say it ain't so Grado. <laughs> oh man. I'm so sorry for Grado. Anyway, yeah, I think that is where it's going, but you're quite right. You're right, Eli didn't have to be in this, but I do like his, uh, his, his shit-stirring uh, character at the moment of just interfering for no reason. Uh, anyway, at least he's on telly and we're not forgetting about him. So anyway, uh, moving on, what do we get next? We had Ali being interviewed backstage, I think. after It was after uh, a bit of a promo of Sue Young, you know, and her title reign so far and going through people. So what, what do you think overall about you know, obviously the title picture and, you know, what they've done with Sue Young and, and this Ali promo. You know, it looks like as far as with Sue Young, I mean, her thing now is when she's done the way she ends her fuse is she buries people. I did feel with Ali and I, I see how they were trying to tie it in. I felt like her 
feuding with Sue Young is kind of going backwards. I thought if you were going to do an Ali Sue Young feud, you should have, that probably should have been a match that you had at Slammiversary instead of her having a, a match against Madison Rain. Or, I'm sorry, Ali having a match against Tessa. But I understand, you know, the storyline with it is, hey, you know, she's buried my best friend. And, you know, she felt like she was to blame for Madison Rain getting buried. So she feels like, you know, she needs to fight in their honor, I guess, so to speak. So, I mean, I don't think it's going to be anything wrong with it. But, you know, once again, we always talk about it. it's a theme, you know, overall is, you know, once you work these programs, you want to have somebody, somebody in the works until you're ready to build up one of these credible challengers and you know in Sue Young's case I mean I know obviously the big money match would be her versus uh, Rosemary but we don't know when Rosemary's coming back and you know just say if Rosemary's not cleared till November December I mean are you really going to have enough to uh, material for Sue Young to drag Sue Young's reign out to that point I mean I have no doubt in my mind creatives more than capable but you know, we know sometimes with certain people's reigns after they've run through everybody, it can get stale relatively quick. So I think this will be fine. But I think in the meantime, they need to have somebody, you know, another challenger coming up because let's face it, Ali versus Sue Young. I th I fully expect if that if that's the way they're going to go, Sue Young's going to win the feud. Yeah, just on that. I mean, first of all, I think that Rosemary is back. January time at earliest, I believe, you know, is the kind of uh, prognosis or, or, you know, anticipated return. But you never know, you know, people come back quicker. Uh, John Cena has the habit of doing it. Um, with regards to the, the booking of this and Ali, you know, going back after Sue Young, what I find really interesting, and we talked about this at the very beginning of the show, is that it's great that the loss to Tessa, it's a great tick for Tessa, but it hasn't hurt Ali at all the way that they booked this. It's almost like, well, let's just forget about it. It never happened. And, you know, I've got pressing engagement with Sue Young. So I think, you know, that they've done a fantastic way of, of building this, that the loss to Ali hasn't hurt her at all. And, you know, I said at the beginning of the show, I thought it was very well done. What I loved about this, and, you know, I, I thought the sh show was very good this week. And, you know, I, I haven't been critical about it much. As someone pointed out last time, I was very critical of a lot of things. Uh, but I thought the Kiera, Kiera an alley bit at the end was so uncomfortably awkward. I mean, it was terrible. It, it, <laughs> I, I, I don't know, even know what was wrong with it, but it just felt terrible and awkward. I, I don't know if, if it came across that way to you. You know, we've seen this. That, you know, she always shows up. I mean, one would assume that we're going to get Kira eventually turning on Ali. Um, and I'm, I'm a firm believer with all the divisions I, they're so heel heavy you know we, you need somebody that's going to be a face so yeah I, I don't know it looks like you know they're playing that care looks up to Ali and this and that so you know maybe we get a scenario where you know after this maybe Kara has a feud with Sue Young maybe that's too early I mean maybe that's too early I don't know maybe I'm just grasping for straws but yeah, it just, it just seemed every now and then we get Ali having this serious promo. And, you know, I, I love what they've been able to do with Ali. They change her character. But then Kiara comes and, you know, they're all jumping up, hugging each other. And it just it just comes off kind of strange. It, it does. It wasn't so much, you know, what, why they've done that, you know, as in the, the storyline. It was just the way it was acted out. It, 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 was, it was almost like everyone in that segment was embarrassed to be saying, the lines that they've been given it, it, it just came over weird to me but anyway that's it's a minor gripe it's a minor gripe so yeah it does look like that uh you know it's going to be ali again going down the sue young route uh yeah so we'll just wait and see so um and i don't know if we're going to see madison rain again for some time but um josh didn't seem too bothered he, he didn't really make uh, much of a comment so uh, why should we be bothered right okay um uh, next up we had the throwback match and i'm not going to talk about this because as you know i always skip past these but do you want to make a comment on it um i liked it because it was motor city machine guns i mean that was one of my favorite tag teams during the time in tna um i'm starting to kind of be in agreement with bq the one thing that they're doing with these things and it's quite annoying i mean god forbid that they use a match with somebody on the current roster to be able to portray them, even if it does involve somebody who's no longer with them. But 
I mean, I've been a firm believer. Why not? And maybe it's, it's not old enough. Why not use Eli Drake's when he won the world title for the first time in the gauntlet for gold? Or one of the, you know, somebody that on the roster in their highest moment. Instead, it seems like anytime something occurs in a real world, they want to capitalize on it. And I think with in Motor City Machine Guns case, uh, Alex Shelley announces retire, retirement of wrestling. I, I believe so. And then I don't know with, uh, obviously, Generation Me, for those who might not be familiar with, is obviously the Young Bucks. They had, I think they won that six-man title or tag team title. So it just comes across sometimes when they have these that they're trying to capitalize on the succession of wrestlers that they had who are successful in, in other uh, companies. And I get it, but I, I think they need to use it more as a tool to showcase the people that they have. I mean, Austin Aries is your champion. You know, there's enough content that you can use. I mean, you can pull up a match where he was faced somebody, obviously, who's not no longer on there on with the company anymore, but him in a winning effort, you know. And, you know, I know that another thing that BQ always talks about, and I'm in agreement, too, like, they can't, they cannot stop themselves from showing AJ Styles and Samoa Joe matches. Like, you kind of have to let it go like i i think true impact fans and teenage fans we know where these guys originally came from and it's okay you know you got to kind of be secure with that showing showing that stuff i think a lot of us fans now we we've seen it we don't want to see that we want to see the people that are here now aj's doing a fantastic job what he's doing over where he's at like we don't need to keep being reminded like hey you know 10 years ago this is the match that he had so it's just kind of one of those things with this you know with the gwn uh, flashbacks some weeks they do it they do a phenomenal job show us you know few clip a few highlights from a match and then they carry on you know this week they showed us a full-on match of you know two teams that are no longer with the company so yeah it's just one of those things man i mean it, it they this could have been time devoted to another match a segment or anything so it's just something i hope that they tweak down the road Talking of segments, uh, we now got into a, a segment-heavy section of the show. Uh, and apologies, this was Grado up next. We've already talked about that, so we'll skip that. After that, we went to Falaba and KM. I, I quite enjoyed this. You know me, fan of, uh, of both Fala and KM. I thought it was quite funny. And, um, yeah, did what it did. A any comments on this? Yeah, this was one of those teams, you know, they, they fell into and I, it looked like they tried to break them up prematurely and realized now we shouldn't do that. So, you know, this is one of those teams. I love to see them, and I, I do believe if they decided to down the road, you know, put the tag team titles on them, I think it'd be, it'd be a big deal, you know, because follow ball's over, obviously. And, you know, Cam, with him, I don't I, – I, I wouldn't say he's turning in face, but I think he's starting to, to uh, gain some of uh, – the uh, uh, fans from uh, Follow Ball, in, in a sense. So, you know, having them compete in some tag team matches here and there, moving up the ranks, and, you know, maybe one day getting a title shot, it wouldn't bother me at all. You, you'd think that they would be good on the old merchandise, these two, if they were tag champions. You'd think there'd be a lot of people, you know, trying to buy their stuff. But anyway, I, I hope you're right. I hope it does go that way. But unfortunately, because you've got the Desi Hit Squad, you feel like they're most probably going to be the next ones in line to, to get a run at, at the titles. But And you most probably feel that KM and Bar are going to get run over by the Hit Squad on the way. But we'll see. Um, we had a Killer Cross promo next. Once again... I think the way that they're packaging this guy is very good and he's not suffering from overexposure at all. You know, he's only had, uh, I think, is it one match? Maybe two, no, two matches, Fala and um, PG Williams. So yeah, they're doing a good job with this and it, he just looks like a genuine nasty, nasty man. So good stuff here. Yeah, the presentation, man. I mean, this they got this right. You know, you think about when, you know, we were wondering, hey, who's this mystery attacker? And we said, they, it either has to be, if it's a debut, it has to be somebody that's a big deal. I mean, you know, like say someone who, from a, a former company or whatever like that. And I mean, I guess he is, but I the, the whole presentation with him, and I think right now in the early stages of building him up, having the when they're not having him in matches, having these video packages of him is doing wonders. So fantastic job. Yeah. Uh, and talking of fantastic jobs, I, I, I love this promo at the OG's Clubhouse. Uh, with King, you know, I, I thought it was really good. And, and you know, the other thing, I, I, I do, do need to mention this, actually, because I listened to the review of Slammiversary t today, and you pointed out something on the review, which I thought, you know what, bro, you finally listened to me. 
you finally listened to me. You're coming away with my round of think- thinking. You said that uh, Santana is going to be a future singles star. You got that from me, didn't you? I've been waxing lyrical about this guy for the last six months, and he was amazing, wasn't he? No, obviously not in this segment, but but uh, he, he's just that. Uh, he's going to be brilliant. Anyway, back to this one. Um, yeah, so I, I thought this was a great promo. I, I it was really good. Yeah, you know, um, you know, and I, I was wrong, and hey, this is one of those instances where hey, I have no problem being wrong. Uh, it's glad to see that that the OGs are going to be here to stay. I mean, who knows how long that's going to be, but. I think there's obviously some uh, mileage in this feud between them and LAX that they can drag out. That's the one thing that I've uh, mentioned in the past. Some of these feuds, they don't have to end right away. I think you can get, you know, a couple, you know, two or three matches out of them before you decide to finally end them. It doesn't then just have to be a one-off and then move forward. So this this is interesting stuff. And I had always been in agreement with you. I just didn't want to mention too much about what, my uh, take on Santana just because it, it you, you know it's going to be inevitable I think LAX is even though my favorite tag team right now in Impact is OVE LAX is by far the best tag team in I mean you could even say in wrestling one of the best tag teams in wrestling right now but we know with a lot of tag teams it's inevitable that they have to split them up and I think you look at Santana's performance and even the matches that he has in Impact where he you know he tags in and does his thing he has star potential, you know, and he can be the next guy that, you know, becomes, you know, the next homegrown uh, star for impact. So you don't want to look too far ahead because the work that LAX is doing is phenomenal. But you just know down the road, it would be a missed opportunity not to really kind of pull the trigger on that and see what he can really do. And obviously it would come at the expense of Ortiz. I mean, I think he's fine in his own right, too. But you know, I could easily see him get lost in the shuffle if they do decide to uh, break him up down the road. Every team has a Genetti. Anyway, um, yeah, so uh, anyway, but this promo was good. And once again, it just shows the, the power of, of the, the creative team here is that OG's lost, but they haven't suffered one bit in that loss, have they? So uh, well played creative. Okay, final promo before we move on to the, sh- the main event. And <laughs> this is brilliant. Uh, once again, someone who lost, but doesn't feel like a loser. And this whole segment was just hilarious. And, and, and when I say hilarious, I, I don't know if it was supposed to be funny. And But, it, you know, the OVE in the bathroom bit where they, they shaved the guy's head. But it, to me, it was funny, but also scary and fit perfectly in character. It wasn't goofy. It was just uncomfortably funny, if that makes sense. But I loved it. I thought it was great. Yeah, it, it was a nice way to play up what happened with uh, Sammy Callahan getting his head shaved. Uh, yeah, I, I laughed too because, I mean, the thought of just, you know, if you just put yourself in, you know, make believe a scenario, <laughs> the fact that you're in the bathroom using the restroom and someone's just pissed off for no reason, they just shave your head. That's that's quite funny. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I won't dwell on it, but once again, Sammy's just doing, well, all of them, all three of them are doing a really good job. And, you know, the, you know is he going to be, the, the Impact World Champion, uh, if he carries on drawing heat like this, there's a very good chance. Right, we've been running long already, so let's get on to the main event. And I, I thought this was a fantastic match. I don't I, I don't know, would you say it was better than a slam reversal one or, or, or on par or, or not quite as good? I, I thought it was better. Um, and it's one of the rare occurrences when you get a pay-per-view match and then a rematch. Usually the latter is, is the one that's... Um, not as great, but yeah, I, I find, and, and that's not to take away from their slam reverse match because the slam reverse match was good, good as well. But I thought here, you know, we saw more out of Cage. I mean, never in my wildest dreams would I've thought, you know, him being bit, way bigger than uh, Seidel, we'd see him Rana, doing a Rana to Seidel. I always kind of attribute to uh, bigger guys when they're pulling off. Uh, her Karanas is usually to a bigger opponent, not to a smaller opponent. But uh, Cage really expanded his arsenal in here and showed that he can do the X Division style. Whereas I felt at the pay per view, we see more of a power game outside of a few moves. So, uh, yeah, and then Seidel, man, man, his heel work, man, it's you, you think about from the beginning and the whole spiritual advisor, and it seemed like it was taking forever for it to really really take into gear and then we see where he is now i mean yeah this this was great and like i said earlier 
you know, I've really changed my opinion as far as Cage being X Division champion and competing in the X Division. I think they, there's a formula that they're going to have with his matches where even though he's facing a smaller opponent, they're going to get they're going to get uh, design it where there's enough offense from the smaller opponent where it's somewhat believable. Because even in this match, too, I found myself saying, dang, Seidel's going to get the win the X Division title back. But obviously, Cage comes out victorious. So, yeah, this was a great main, main event. It was. It was brilliant. And one thing I noticed a lot of criticism about is Matt Seidel's music, by the way, his intro music. I really like it. I think it fits his character fantastically well. And I think it's quite distinctive. So I don't get the hate for the for his uh, theme tune, his steam entrance music. Uh, namaste. Um, so, yeah, so that was this week's show. I, I thought overall it was excellent. There was a few segments, which, as I said, I, I didn't care for. But, but overall, I, I thought they... You know they've really hit their stride, and I can't remember the last time I've I've watched anything Impact where I thought, Do you know, what? <sighs> I can't be bothered with this next week. It's been great overall. You know, we've got some new storylines starting. You know, Eddie and Austin. We got some storylines now finishing, and we, just everyone seems to be going off in their own direction. So it's great. You know, Creative have done an amazing job, and and Don Callis he deserves another gold chain around his neck next week when he's got his pimping shirt on. <laughs> Right on. So here, let me just give a quick rundown. Obviously, I'm sure uh, they'll advertise more matches during the week, but it looks like we're going to get Austin Aries facing Dustin Cameron, and Dustin Cameron is the student from uh, Anthony Corelli School. We're also going to get, I want to say, Pentagon Jr. and Phoenix versus OVE, so Chris Brothers. Then we're getting Ali and uh, Kiera Hogan versus Sue Young and one of her maids of honor, so that, that should be interesting. And then we're also getting an appearance by the OG. So just based off of those four matches alone, it looks like it's going to be a solid show. And like I said, I'm sure we're going to get some other matches and other surprises that they've not advertised. And that's okay. I, I think sometimes what they got to do is they don't need to advertise every single thing. You know, you advertise your big matches. And then as we watch, there's surprises. You know, I do appreciate a good surprise. Absolutely. So... Thanks for tuning in this week. Make sure you hit subscribe. Leave us some comments below and don't forget to answer the trivia question, which will Roe will remind you about in a second. And finally, check us both out on Twitter, especially if you want to get some uh, live updates and pictures from the, the UK tapings when they happen in September. You can get me at V2 Wrestling Show. And Roe, your Twitter handle and trivia question again, please. Yes, uh, Twitter handle is rtgreat underscore. Once again, that's rtgreat underscore. And the trivia question is, obviously, who am I? Uh, the three clues are, I, the match that I've innovated, I've lost more than I've won. I'm, I'm an original. And then finally, I'm one of the rare few wrestlers in the world to win a world heavyweight championship via disqualification. Who am I? and there you go that's us for this week thanks for tuning in and we'll be back uh, same place same time next week take care everyone hey don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel check out the video below for more impact wrestling related content this is the impact lounge